<clears throat> Hello, uh, we'll talk now about Jean-Jacques Lequeux, uh, an interesting, intriguing, and even uh, an outrageous um, architect uh, who, together with uh, uh, Ledoux and Boulet, formed the special triad of visionary architects, Jean-Jacques Lequeux. Uh, Jean-Jacques Lequeux uh, who was born on September 14th, 1757 and died in 1826, was a French draftsman and architect. Born in Rouen, he won a scholarship to go to Paris. Following the French Revolution, Lequeux's architectural career never took off. He spent time preparing the Architecture Civile, a book intended for publication, but which was never published. He became a civil servant, working as a surveyor and cartographer until his retirement in 1815. Uh, a very interesting architect with a very interesting biography. Lequeux is now considered part of the period of visionary architecture, which developed in the period leading up to the French Revolution. This was directly influenced by the great competitions organized by the Ecole des Beaux-Arts. These competitions encouraged entries comprising massive buildings unfettered by budgetary constraints. This resulted in scores of designs for vast and impressive buildings, which had little connection with the real world and remained paper architecture. Architects of this genre include Claude Nicolas Ledoux, Etienne Boulet, and Antoine Laurent Thomas Vaudoyer. Vaudoyer. Most of these, like Lequeux, are more famous for their unbuilt works than for buildings actually constructed. And this is worth uh, mentioning because even if you do not build, if you have a, a vision, if you are dedicated to architecture, you can still make it to the history of architecture with your original contribution through your drawings. And this is what he did, Lequeux, Jean-Jacques Lequeux. But be prepared to see some, uh, you know, uh, even outrageous uh, drawings. A strange man who probably needed uh, on his side uh, for a while at least, uh, Dr. Sigmund Freud, but Dr. Sigmund Freud was not yet born. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to make of his, uh, of his proposals, you know. Uh, I, I'll just show... Uh, a series of drawings that Jean-Jacques Lequeux uh, did. Et nous, nous aussi, nous serons mères. Car, this is a, this is a drawing that he did. She, and, and we will be mothers as well, because, and he leaves it like this. And now, what do you make of this? Jean-Jacques Lequeux. A uh, man of contradictions and uh, strange uh, uh, visions. Orthography du tombeau de Porcena, roi d'Ertrurie, appelé le labyrinthe de Toscane, 1792. And he accompanied his drawings with a lot of uh, writing, uh, lots of uh, references to mythology, and so on. Uh, you know, upon reading the text, probably a lot of uh, uh, deciphering could happen of what he intended to do. He drew impeccably. He was a, a remarkable draftsperson, and you have to understand he didn't benefit from uh, Photoshop or anything like it. Everything was done uh, by hand. Uh, La Porte de Paris, du Paris, et de Cheminet, 1794, another project where you see the, the, the force, the, the presence of sculpture, of statue, where the statue is almost bigger than the building itself. And again, the, the references to mythology are very, very important, something we don't do any longer, but maybe we should, we could go back to mythology and learn some or relearn some things that we forgot. Jean-Jacques Lequeux, born the 14th of September, just like Grand Sopiano and Ettore Sotsas, because we are going to talk about Ettore Sotsas as well. 
In terms of the art of drawing, we have to acknowledge that uh, indeed Jean-Jacques Lecoeur drew impeccably. Colored pencils. Elevation géométrale du Temple de la Terre, the Temple of the Earth, 1794. Uh, I wish I had, uh, maybe later I will have a better picture of this, the Temple of the Earth, Jean-Jacques Lecoeur, monument destiné à l'exercice de la souveraineté du peuple en assemblée primaire. I mean, this, this, melange between politics and art uh, puzzles me. But this was the time, um, you know. Uh, a belief in monumental architecture, in symbolic architecture. The Saint de Ponceau par Le Coeur, Ecole Polytechnique, before 1802, uh, it's, a, it's a bridge. It's, it's, it's a drawing for a bridge. Not too much mythology here, that's for sure. Ash pour concevoir. Well, look what he did. A frustrated architect. What can we say? La Sauvage Blanche, dessinée d'après nature. The white uh, savage. Uh, obviously, he had problems. This man, Etude de l'Oeil, de uh, Studies of the Oi, of, of the Eye. Um, he was a solitary man, indeed, uh, very solitary, probably, and introverted and with problems. Not that he was the only one on this earth. We all have problems. But not too many architects left such drawings behind them. Il est libre. Now, why did he say il est libre? Because here we are seeing a woman, not a man. Il means uh, masculine. But we see here something else. I don't know what he was referring to with il est libre. Le grand bailleur. Uh, <laughs> is a man who is yawning or what? Or sighing. Some other projects, let's call them projects, designs for a temple of the earth. This one we already saw, but here we also see a section through it, uh, reminding one of the cenotaph for Newton by uh, Etienne Boulet, but much smaller, but drawn uh, very, very well. Again, the temple of the earth. Maybe we can think again about some, some kind of a temple for the earth before uh, the war in Ukraine extends. That's how it will not extend. Jean-Jacques Lecoeur, Temple of the Earth, for the Earth. Well, there it is written, a la sagesse suprême, uh, to the supreme wisdom. Where is that wisdom, Mr. Putin? No wisdom. Beyond architecture, builder of lusty fantasies, that's how he was described, Jean-Jacques Lecoeur. The Morgan Library and Museum is exhibiting the unleash, unleashed imagination of Jean-Jacques Lecoeur, who reveled in light and pleasure. <laughs> well, we know from Leonardo da Vinci that there is no pleasure without pain. I'm sure he knew a lot about pain as well. Maybe, first of all, Designed for a temple of equality. Who do, who do a temple for equality these days? Nobody. Draftsman's tools, his own tools as a draftsperson, greatly drawn indeed with some notations. That's probably his own hand. Drawing, drawing, drawing. Jean-Jacques Lecoeur. Designed for a living room at the Hotel de Montholon, Montholon, 1786. We only have drawings by him. The tomb of Isocrates, Athenian orator, 1789. Strange, strange tomb, no? Strange monument. Look at this. Look what's there on, on top of the, of the building, per se.
So this was built for, was imagined for an Athenian orator, 1789. Uh, you this is a narrative architecture. You have to know the specifics relating to Isocrates and you know the, the Athenian orator in order to understand the symbolism of uh, what is there. The great yoner and he sticks out his tongue. We already saw, uh, we saw this image. Uh, now the telephone is ringing, you know, I, I hate the, the, the mobile phone. I really hate it. I have to answer, sorry. Hello? Ah, now it's stopped. Anyway, uh, again, Jean-Jacques Lecoeur, we can contemplate his tongue. Tavern and Hammock of Love, uh, 1810. Uh, finally, a uh, more down-to-earth building, so to speak, but we don't know very well what's going on on the sketch on the right side between those two trees. Indian Pagoda of Intelligence, Well, at a different scale, you know, with the three parts, you know, we could think of the Palais de Justice by uh, Renzo Piano. What is this? A building within, uh, you know, an elephant-like uh, construction. Jean-Jacques Lecoeur. The subterranean labyrinth of the Gothic house. I like this drawing, and it is subterranean and it is labyrinthian or labyrinthian. He drew very well indeed. The dairy house, face building, and the hen house, an architectural joke. So I guess architectural follies were accepted, uh, you know, 200 years ago as well. The X-rated architecture of Jean-Jacques Lecoeur. We already got some glimpses at uh, the X-rated aspects of well, let's call it architecture. What we saw with the X in front of them were images of something else, not architecture. Well, this, this image, this vision, this drawing shows something that, uh, you know, could very well be built uh, at the Burning the Man uh, Festival or in similar, uh, other similar circumstances. The Gate of a Hunting Ground, 1800s, we already saw this picture was the first one I showed. I showed. So it's a gate of a hunting ground. The poor animals with their heads, the, you know, cut off from their bodies as a triumph of uh, the hunting man said. Painstakingly perfect and utterly peculiar, the drawings of Jean-Jacques Lecoeur, that's how someone described them, painstakingly perfect and utterly peculiar. The drawings of Jean-Jacques Lecoeur. Another tombeau. We already saw this one for the, the Athenian orator. The, the tomb of Isocrates. Was he a happy architect? Probably not. He was frustrated. But but uh, again, I, I uh, forgive me. This, this telephone exasperates me. Hello, hello.
Da, unde sunteți? Bine, vă aștept. Mulțumesc frumos. Bine, mulțumesc frumos. Mulțumesc, mulțumesc. Da, da, da. Da, în tocănea asta. Lângă bârla, da. La 20 de minute, da. Poftim? Gara Docăneasa. Bine. Bine, mulțumesc. Mulțumesc. Ai, the disaster today. Uh, uh, you know, my, my recordings are, are ruined. Uh, anyway, uh, I don't know even. Anyway, Jean-Jacques Lecoe, Jean-Jacques Lecoe and his tools, tools, drawing tools, uh, <laughs> a fragmented face, and uh, I, I end this, uh, you know, ruined uh, presentation. <laughs>